Welcome to the course MCDM techniques using R. So, in previous lecture we started our discussion on uh, this particular course. So, we talked about uh, what is decision making, we also discussed a number of uh, decision uh, you know number of examples of decision problems. Uh, we all we defined uh, decision making, we understood uh, the complexity of a decision making process. Uh, criteria, alternatives, uh, role of decision maker, subjective preferences all that we talked about in uh, previous lecture. Uh, we also talked about uh, MCDM and MCDA and it, their application in various fields and the influence of various disciplines on the field of uh, MCDM. So, all this we talked about in the previous course. We also discussed uh, the various steps uh, that are involved. Uh, in MCDM process. So, uh, some of these steps uh, that we discussed, uh, we also discussed uh, the sub steps uh, that are involved in a uh, MCDM process. Uh, so, uh, at this point uh, we ended our previous lecture, we were talking about uh, the non-linearity, complexity and uh, the iterative aspect of uh, MCDM process. So, let us start. Uh, so, in this uh, lecture we are going to uh, carry forward that discussion. So, uh, as you can see uh, decision making uh, problems uh, they can actually be solved by employing uh, many types of uh, analysis. So, some of them we are going to discuss here the major one. So, one uh, is uh, uh, first one is called uh, descriptive analysis. So, this uh, descriptive analysis is also sometimes referred as behavior decision research. So, this uh, typically focuses on DM problems, decision making problems that are actually solved by decision makers. Uh, what, we act, what we mean by when we say actually solved by decision maker, it would be more clear when we talk about the other uh, type of uh, you know analysis. Uh, this is uh, this particular you know descriptive analysis is particularly addressed in the fields of psychology, marketing and uh, consumer research. Uh, so, uh, typically when we say that uh, descriptive analysis focuses on the problems which are actually solved by decision makers, we are talking about the you know irrational behavior uh, of the you know, you know consumers uh, which are typically studied in the fields of psychology, marketing and consumer re research. Uh, there is another form of uh, analysis uh, that can be used for decision making problems. Uh, this is normative and prescriptive analysis. The, in the uh, normative part, uh, this uh, normative part the focus is on DM problem that should be ideally addressed. So, we are looking at the ideal case scenario therefore, we are uh, considering that decision makers are going to be a, a rational uh, you know uh, uh, going to follow rational approach in uh, instead of uh, the irrational approach uh, you know uh, that is typically studied in uh, the other fields of psychology, marketing and consumer research. So, uh, the normative part focuses on the problem that should be ideally addressed and the prescriptive parts uh, considers methods that could actually be used to solve these problems. So, normative part uh, so, the typically ideal case scenario the ideal ca uh, case uh, problems are identified and the prescriptive part is uh, about understanding the methods which can actually be applied to solve those problems. So, typically uh, these uh, this kind of analysis is dealt in the fields of decision science, economics and operations research. Now, let us uh, understand uh, the MCDM problems and the uh, various components uh, that it comprises of. So, as we have talked about in the previous lecture, we discussed a particular example of a school committing uh, given, given the task of allocating the scholarships uh, to students based on their performance on various subjects. So, their allocation of a scholarship that was the goal. So, goal is one uh, important component of MCDM problem. Uh, then decision makers preferences. So, when we said that uh, school committee is playing the role of decision maker and uh, they might prefer to value a particular uh, performance on a particular co course more than uh, the performance of students on other courses. So, that would actually be come under this uh, second component which is decision makers preferences. Uh, then the third component is uh, you know, uh, alternatives. So, in, in, the, in that examples students uh, were the alternatives. Uh, then the next important component is the criteria. So, uh, the criteria were the subjects. So, the subjects that are going to be used 
uh, to actually evaluate these alternatives uh, and then the outcomes. So, after you know understanding uh, these other components goal, uh, preferences of DMs, alternatives and criteria, we need to arrive at a final decision. So, that is part of the uh, last component outcomes. Now, if we look at the MCDM problems uh, and uh, try to classify them into understandable uh, you know categories. Uh, so, this uh, particular classification has been done. So, two main categories are there. So, MCDM problems can be classified into two main categories. First one is called multiple attribute decision making or MADM. The second one is called multiple objective decision making or MODM. So, uh, let us understand uh, these two categories MADM and MODM. So, we typically uh, you know uh, you know typically uh, uh, we see MCDM as the term which is uh, more often used in the literature and not these two terms MADM and MODM. Reason being uh, there are more similarities between these two terms. So, even though these are defined as two different categories one is MADM the another one is MODM, but there are more, more similarities between these two, two categories than differences. Uh, so, let us understand these two categories. So, MADM this is uh, typically suitable for evaluation fa uh, facet. Uh, the example that we talked about uh, the allocation of scholarship. So, that is evaluation facet we are trying to evaluate uh, th th that was a ranking problem. So, MADM is more suitable for evaluation facet uh, when we are supposed to evaluate something and limited number of predetermined alternatives. Uh, uh, when this scenario is there for example, there are going to be you know in that example that we talked about uh, there are going to be number of few number of students who are going to be eligible. Uh, for the scholarship. So, therefore, uh, we will uh, have the predetermined uh, limited number of predetermined alternatives. Uh, then several conflicting criteria are to be considered. Now, uh, in the example uh, that we talked about uh, the performance on different subjects. So, uh, some DM might prefer uh, one uh, subject to another, the another DM uh, might prefer one subject uh, over uh, the other one. So, th there might be some conflict uh, depending on the varying differences of different decision makers. If there is just one decision maker even then there could be trade offs that could be involved. So, it is not just uh, you know that if there is going to be one DM. So, the uh, the in the uh, this problem conflicting criteria problem is not going to be there. Uh, still it is going to be there, but the criteria th themselves uh, they will be conflicting and when there are going to be more than uh, one decision maker this uh, complexity is going to increase even further. Discrete preference information. So, when decision makers have very discrete qualitative kind of uh, you know uh, preference information uh, then that all these you know characteristics uh, typically define MADM uh, you know MADM uh, problems multi attribute decision making problems. Now, uh, MADM uh, methods you know, they can be further divided into uh, two categories. So, they have two main methodological schools. So, first one is called a value based theories. So, uh, this uh, this particular category value based theory is uh, based on the uh, based on how uh, humans typically evaluate alternatives. So, earlier you know uh, it was believed that uh, people tip, uh, look at the expected value. Uh, however, you know there are various examples where that is not the case. Uh, even though expected value cannot be used for decision making, uh, the people make decisions. So, therefore, it was realized that it is probably the utility value uh, of a particular you know uh, alternative that is actually used by humans for decision makings. So, these value based theory actually proposed uh, the importance of utility value and instead of the expected value uh, in human decision making. DM's preferences are determined using an appropriate utility function. So, how do we determine the utility value for a particular you know alternative? So, typically utility functions are derived and they are used to uh, determine the score. Uh, for DM's preferences. So, this is we can understand it uh, utility function as a numerical representation of the DM's preferences on the set of uh, alternatives. So, uh, you know many times uh, this numerical uh, representation is quite difficult to specify 
and that becomes a, 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 a that becomes uh, a drawback of uh, uh, this program method value based theories. Now, as you can see unrealistic uh, assumption of preferential independence this is another problem uh, another drawback of uh, value based theories. Uh, because the uh, we in this particular theory we assume that the alternatives the criteria uh, they are uh, they are independent which might not be which might not be realistic. Now then uh, another point is that empirical difficulties could be experienced uh, with the utility function in handling practical problems. As I said utility function, uh, function could be many times could, uh, could be very difficult to specify and because of this uh, we might face uh, you know uh, practical challenges in terms of using the approaches the methods under uh, value based theories. The second uh, methodological school is called outranking school of thought. So, here uh, you know if you know we do not have uh, to uh, think about uh, specify a utility function rather we can compare uh, the preference, preference relations among alternatives uh, and that is to be used uh, for uh, further uh, solving of decision making problem. Now, the main criticism of uh, this particular school of thought is there are lack of axiomatic uh, foundations because these preference relations are you know determined based on the DM's preferences, DM's uh, subjective preferences. The, so, therefore, there is obviously going to be a lack of uh, these axiomatic foundations. So, that is one criticism of uh, this particular school of thought. So, we uh, need to understand uh, the main differences between these two the uh, you know value based theories and out uh, ranking school of thought. So, few points are mentioned here. Uh, the main difference is the way alternatives are compared. So, there in the value based theory we have utility functions every alternative is going to have a global score. Uh, however, in uh, out ranking it is uh, based on the you know we are going to compare uh, our preferences uh, on different alternatives. So, the way alternatives are compared that is very different in these two schools of thought and the type of inco information for this comparison uh, that is required for DM that is also different. So, type of information and the way comparison takes place. So, all that is quite different and is the uh, main difference between these two schools of thought uh, value based theory and outranking. Now, uh, when do we uh, know that outranking methods are going to be suitable for our decision problem? When do we know that value based methods are going to be uh, you know uh, should be preferred? So, this is often difficult uh, to uh, decide. However, few uh, things uh, that we can understand from here is if the evaluation of alternatives on the criteria is mainly qualitative then probably we will go with outranking methods because we need to determine you know we need to study the preference relations there and if the you know evaluation is uh, qualitative then uh, that is uh, the uh, more suitable approach. Or if uh, the DM would uh, DM uh, they are imprecise about their preferences uh, in the model then in that scenario also outranking approach could be the more suitable approach. However, if uh, you know we need to uh, model the compensatory behavior of the DM uh, that means uh, you know uh, preference for a particular you know criterion over another criterion. So, therefore, that trade off has to be modeled. So, in that sense uh, in that case value based method would be more suitable because we will get a global score which can be used for uh, comparison. If you look at the examples of uh, these two schools of thought under MADM methods, so value based theories, uh, multiple attribute utility theory or uh, MAUT, uh, this is the method that is uh, typically used. If you look at the examples of outranking methods, then we have uh, uh, Electra, AHP, Topsys, uh, Wicker. So, these are some of the methods uh, that come under outranking methods category. So, uh, what we talked about is MADM. So, within MCDM we talked about uh, uh, two categories MADM and MODM and within MADM we talked about another uh, you know two schools of thought value based theories and outranking methods. So, let us uh, move forward. So, second category within MCDM is MODM multi objective decision making. Uh, so, this particular uh, you know uh, this particular category is suitable for design uh, or planning facet just like the MADM that was more suitable for evaluation facet. This is more suitable for design or planning facet. 
uh, aimed at obtain, obtaining optimal solution because we are in the design and planning uh, you know uh, phase then of course we would prefer to go with the optimal solution we can apply our optimization algorithms and uh, achieve that uh, you know uh, achieve the best solution that is possible uh, for that decision problem. So, MODM under MODM, so this is the uh, main aim obtaining optimal solution. Uh, jo, the, the conflicting objectives uh, you know that we called about you know, we talked about under MCDM conflicting criteria. In MADM we refer uh, criteria as attributes and in MODM we refer criteria uh, you know as objectives. So, the conflicting objectives uh, the set of conflicting objectives they are to be achieved simultaneously because we are looking for an optimal solution we are going to apply optimization uh, methods. So, therefore, uh, this is to be done uh, simultaneously so that becomes a characteristic of uh, MODM as well. We have a set of well defined constraint uh, so only then we would be able to find a unique optimal solution. So, that is also a characteristic of MODM. If we look at the methods, the kind of methods that are used under MODM. So, uh, there we talked about in MADM, we talked about value based theories and outranking school of thoughts. Here, typically, uh, you know, we used uh, you know, methods of mathematical programming uh, uh, to solve optimization problems. Uh, so, uh, there are some th there are some issues with uh, the methods uh, that are associated with mathematical programming. Uh, for example, there is going to be a trade off problem right because uh, we are going to have multiple objectives and they would are they uh, would have to be transformed into a weighted single objective. So, uh, we need trade off information how uh, multiple objectives are to be transformed into a weighted single objective. So, that trade off information is required. Uh, if trade off information is not available then we will have to go with the Pareto solution. So, this uh, issue can always be there with the uh, you know mathematical programming methods that are typically used in MODM. Then there is going to be scale problem what if uh, the number of objectives that are to be used uh, the, you know the, that are being used in a particular decision problem they uh, you know they increase. So, the curse of dimensionality is going to be there and uh, the computational cost will actually increase because remember we are talking about finding an optimal solution we are talking about applying optimization algorithms uh, for uh, this kind of uh, these kind of problems MODM problems. So, therefore, uh, the dimensional uh, cuts of dimensionality is an you know, important issue that we have to deal with and it might might lead to uh, lead to uh, computational cost. So, there are various mechanisms uh, to handle some of these scenarios for example, this curse of dimensionality can be handled using algorithms uh, like genetic algorithm, uh, genetic programming and evolution strategies. Some of these uh, uh, you know approaches and algorithms can be used to uh, you know deal with some uh, this uh, these uh, scale and trade off scenarios. Now, we look at the examples of uh, MODM. Uh, then goal programming, compromise solution, data envelopment analysis DEA, de novo programming, topsis for MODM and multiple criteria uh, you know multiple constraints label. So, these are uh, some of the examples uh, of MODM methods uh, that are uh, popularly used. So, within MCDM till now we talked about two main categories uh, MADM multi attribute decision making and MODM multi objective decision making. And uh, so, uh, in, in MADM uh, again we have two schools of thought value based theories where the uh, you know more common example method is MAUT and uh, then we have outranking school of thought where we have a number of methods electoral, topsis, uh, weaker and all those methods are there. Uh, uh, the in MODM uh, we typically used uh, mathematical programming and different examples uh, uh, different examples for these methods we uh, already discussed goal programming compromise uh, solution DEA all these uh, are the examples. Now, after having understood different uh, kinds of uh, you know uh, different kinds of categories for MCDM and within that uh, different kinds of uh, you know uh, uh, approaches or schools of thought. Let us understand the type of decision problems that comes under the domain of MCDM. So, uh, as we talked about uh, previously uh, there are four main problems which are more common choice, 
ranking, sorting and description. There are other types of problems, decision problems as well uh, which are uh, solved under MCDM, uh, but these are the uh, uh, four main types. So, let us discuss them one by one. So, first one is choice problem. So, what these problems are about? So, in choice problems goal is to select the single best alternative or at least reduce the group of alternatives to a subset of equivalent or incomparable good alternatives. So, either we are looking for uh, you know best alternative, single best alternative or at least we should be able to reduce uh, the set of alternatives to a uh, you know uh, equivalent or incomparable uh, set of uh, you know alternatives. For example, a manager selecting the right person for a particular project. So, the um, you know for a particular project uh, the manager would need just one person. So, he would obviously look for a you know single best person for, for that particular project depending on uh, different uh, you know criteria uh, and uh, depending on the given the number of alternatives number of employees that could be uh, suitable for uh, this particular project. So, this is more of a choice problem. So, it might so happen that manager uh, might be able to identify a single best person or at least uh, may arrive at two or three persons which are having the you know you know uh, you know can be considered as good alternatives. Then the second kind of problem is called a sorting problem. So, in this particular problem the alternatives they are sorted sorted into ordered and predefined groups. So, these groups are these categories are predefined and the sorting problem is about sorting the alternatives into uh, one of these categories. The goal is to regroup the alternatives with similar behaviors or characteristics for descriptive, organizational or predictive reasons. So, the idea is uh, there are number of alternatives we would like to uh, you know uh, sort them and uh, these alternatives regroup them based on the similar behaviors that they might have. So, one example of uh, this kind of sorting problem is performance appraisal of employees by a firm. So, a firm would like to categorize employees into uh, you know out performing employees, average performing employees or weak uh, performing employees. So, because that would be uh, uh, you know important for the firm to distribute bonuses or give hikes in the salaries. So, that becomes a sorting problem. Uh, so, typically these kind of problems are you know they are useful for repetitive or automatic use or some sort of you know sometimes in initial screening also if you have to do some sort of initial screening then also uh, uh, this problem can be uh, suitable. Then there is another type of problem called ranking problem. So, in this uh, particular problem alternatives are ordered from best to worst by means of scores or pair wise comparisons. So, that full ranking we so the aim is to get that full ranking from best to worst based on certain scores. So, they could be uh, you know global scores or pair wise comparisons uh, which can be used for to perform this ranking. Now, the uh, this uh, resulted ordering uh, can sometimes be complete can sometimes be partial. So, that depends on uh, whether we have the uh, whether uh, among the alternatives we have some of the incompar incomparable alternatives as well. If incomparable alternatives are also being considered then we might end up with the partial ranking uh, otherwise uh, uh, we might get the complete ranking. So, example of uh, ranking problem is uh, the best example uh, this uh, particular example we talked about uh, in the lecture previous lecture as well ranking of universities. So, ranking of universities according to uh, several criteria such as teaching quality, research expertise and career opportunities. So, uh, this is a uh, this example is a uh, you know ranking problem example. Now, let us uh, talk about the fourth type of uh, decision problem this is called description problem. Uh, so, uh, you know typically this kind of uh, you know this problem description problem you will like to solve uh, you know if we are dealing with a complex decision problem. So, and we are not able to understand the problem itself then probably we would like to formulate a description problem first. Uh, so, let us understand uh, uh, what we mean by uh, this uh, kind of uh, this type of problem. 
So, under description problem goal is to describe alternatives and their consequences. Sometimes it might be difficult to even understand the characteristics of alternatives and uh, in case we uh, uh, you know prefer one over the other uh, what are going to be the consequences, so, the trade offs and uh, you know value judgment uh, that is sometimes difficult to understand. So, uh, this kind of problem this uh, description problem and the methods that are used to solve these problems they help achieve this goal describe the alternatives and their consequences. So, as I said typically uh, you know these problems are solved as a first step to understand the characteristic or characteristics of the decision problem itself. So, if the decision problem itself is very complex we can take it as a description problem and first try to understand the problem itself. Then uh, there are other problem types also for example, elimination problem. So, the elimination problem is a type of sorting problem itself. Uh, then uh, there is another uh, type of uh, problem called design problem. Uh, then elicitation problem is there uh, for example, subjective preferences of DM if, if we find it uh, difficult to, to understand the subjective preferences of DM probably elicitation problem they can help. Then uh, we also need to have group decision method uh, if more than one DM are involved uh, several decision makers are involved then probably we need to have a group decision methods as well. So, overall uh, in this course uh, we are going to uh, mainly focus on choice and ranking problems and uh, we are going to cover most popular MADM methods. So, in this particular course we are not going to focus on MODM methods we will mainly focus on MAD, MADM uh, methods and within uh, the MADM method we will look to uh, you know focus on choice and ranking problems. So, the exercises uh, that we are going to uh, you know perform uh, in this particular course they would be typically uh, on choice and ranking problems. Now, uh, some, some of these uh, many of these methods that we used uh, that we use in MC, MCDM uh, they are uh, quite technical in nature. So, therefore, various softwares have been developed and there is a huge list of softwares uh, uh, you know that are used for MC uh, that are used for different MCDA methods. Uh, uh, these typically these softwares uh, you know they, uh, they typically uh, provide the uh, uh, you know one particular method or two or three there is uh, not one comprehensive solution that covers all of them. Uh, or all different versions of uh, different uh, MCDA methods. Uh, so, as you can see here uh, most of the software tools focus on a small number of algorithms, some are difficult to adopt and interface with other tools. Sometimes if you have to use a combination of uh, you know you know a combination of tools or methods then uh, some of these softwares are difficult to do that. Only a few belong to dynamic committees of contributor, contributors. So, in the sense once a software is developed whether that software is maintained and upgraded uh, you know for you know upgraded and new versions are released that is also not uh, you know applicable for all the software. So, there, only, there are only few uh, software where there are dynamic communities which keep on uh, contributing for the development of those softwares uh, in, in the sense they allow. Uh, uh, they allow uh, them to expand in terms of functionality and use. So, because of all these problems uh, in this particular course uh, we are going to use R statistical environment. Uh, so, R statistical environment has not been quite often used for MCDM. Uh, so, in this particular course we are trying to attempt and bridge that gap. Uh, as you can see here in this slide there is no unique free software for all MCDM math, MCDA methods that is sufficiently comprehensive. So, R is one platform that can provide that that can fill that gap and uh, can be a comprehensive platform where most of the uh, techniques can be covered and because we have a large community of contributors for our software platform therefore, uh, you know uh, the uh, you know expansion of these matter, methods in terms of functionality and uses can always be there. So, this uh, R platform R environment is also a significant platform where lot of decision support uh, tools are being developed. Uh, integration as I talked about integration uh, among diverse analyses can be uh, can become quite easy if we are using R. 
and then there are other advantages of our uh, environment which are well known it being a you know statistical uh, you know software environment also provide data mining techniques. So, there are so many other advantages very popular. Uh, so, in terms of skills and expertise there are more resources that are available to understand R and how to use R not just for MC DCN uh, support tools or MCDM, but even for you know analytics and uh, statistical uh, you know research purposes. If we look at the relevant R packages uh, that are available uh, for uh, MCDM uh, to, uh, to use MCDM methods. So, some of these uh, relevant R package I have, I have mentioned in this particular slide as you can see here. So, CRAN repository of uh, R, uh, there are number of packages which cover a number of techniques uh, belonging to MCDM. Uh, so, there is package called MCDM itself uh, covering a number of techniques. Then there is a package on ASP, TOPSYS, Fuji ASP, Fuji MCDM, then there is another package decision support, uh, outranking tools, MCDA. So, these are some of the uh, you know packages that are available and support a number of uh, techniques. Then there are other useful uh, packages which can be used in conjunction, conjunction, uh, conjunction uh, with the, these uh, relevant packages uh, which are mentioned here in the slide itself. Now, if you are not familiar with the R environment and R programming and how it is done, uh, so you can refer uh, my previous course on NPTEL, it is called Business Analytics and Data Mining Modeling Using R. So, this particular course you can refer, there is a particular lecture on uh, introduction to R and that can actually be used to understand and to familiarize yourself with the R environment itself. So, we will stop at this point and we will continue our discussion on MCDM and the software packages in the next lecture. Thank you.